All right, here's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with poorly painted walls, like I showed in my last update video. So it's uh, it's Tuesday night. I think it's the, the 29th of August. I went yesterday to Sherwin Williams, and I got their uh, you know their premium stuff. I got um, primer, and I got some you know premium top coat paint. So we'll see how this works out. They assured me that it's going to do a good job, which I really hope. And we're going to turn these gray these gray walls white. All right, we got the we got the primer on. And, um, you know, I'm looking through the viewfinder and everything looks very blue. I believe that's because of these lights up here. They have a, uh, they have like a plastic you know, perforated looking grill on them. And they just seem to be casting a, a bluish grayish light, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> sounds like I'm making excuses, but no, I mean, it's, um, all the paint, the primer, I should say, is white it's real even it looks good it's uh it's what you would expect you know you put something down and it it covers and it's white as it's supposed to be um, again it's either you know this is a combination of the lights in here and the white balance because when you look at the lathe here that's a cream color in regular you know daylight um, but to my eyes right now, as I look at it, it just has a real greenishness to it. Almost like my South Bend's. So that's definitely casting a, you know, a, 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 an inaccurate display of this paint. But I can assure you, it's nice and white. So this is the primer. We're gonna hit it with some color, you know, maybe tomorrow or the next day. Uh, but I'm happy, you know, it's one gallon covered uh, all the way back there that little tiny jog of the wall that wall this jog back this uh this whole wall here all the way to the edge and of course the wall i'm standing up against all the way back to the to the uh garage doors over here so we're in good shape it's uh 52 percent humidity in here today it's 77 degrees i think all right, we're going to do a time and temperature. 829, 78 degrees, 57% humidity. It's pretty dry in here now and it's nice and cool. So this will dry overnight. I'm very excited to see how it's going to look tomorrow. Well, here we are. Our walls are, are completed. And I'm real happy. Um, it, you know, I'm looking through the viewfinder and it's hard to tell if the camera's picking this up or not, but the walls are brilliant white. They really are. <clears throat> that Sherwin-Williams paint is real good. <clears throat> Here, let's give them a plug. This was the paint right here. It is called Duration. Duration Home, excellent durability and washability. Duration Home, interior acrylic latex paint. Extra white in satin. <clears throat> now I asked the guy about satin and eggshell and all that stuff. And uh, every time I've gotten a paint that was not glossy, I felt like it was hard to clean. Um, it, just, it just felt like it would hold dirt. But he, he went through this whole spiel about how, you know, paint has changed over the years and the products are different and it's, you know, extremely washable with a, with a soft rag and, you know, simple green, actually, he said. That was his recommendation. It will get anything off this paint. Um, the next thing that we have to do here is paint this, uh, this concrete, little concrete wall a couple inches. You know, you could see over here, um, it's probably about an inch. The, the pad is probably about an inch below the wall. And then when you make your way all the way out by the table saw, it's probably somewhere around three and a half inches, you know, uh, down. And they do that purposely to slope the slab. Now, we're going to paint it with this color right down here. 
Uh, where is it? Right there. So I'll, uh, I'll try to zoom in a little bit. You could see that little that little sample smear matches the bottom of the uh, the ice and lathe here, and that's really what I was going for. I wanted to have that like dark gray border, right? I, I don't have trim in here, so I think that the you know the medium lightish gray floor will will have a nice you know solid dark border transitioning between that and the white wall. I think it's going to trim up and make it look really uh, really nice. So I'm excited about that and. It's, uh, it's Thursday morning, that's what we're going to be doing tonight, is uh, painting, that, uh, painting that wall down there. So I look forward to seeing how that is. Oh, and, and actually, after that, then there is one more thing to do, and that's to paint the, the little wall space between these garage doors. And if you see up above, um, it was originally, obviously, it was originally painted in white. Um, it, it's an area that I never painted gray, right? So I, I made my way with, with the gray all the way out to here, but I stopped over there. I, I just, I don't know, I probably just ran out of paint a couple of years ago. So the junky Glidden paint that I have, um, you could actually see, I did, I did hit it up at the top over there, and it, it really made it nice. There, obviously, there's no bleed through, there's no gray paint to bleed through, so... Uh, I have a whole gallon of that to do to do just above the two garage doors and in, you know now that's probably about a foot over uh, over in this area that's about a foot and above the garage doors is about a foot and a half yeah a little less than two feet and then again in the middle is about a foot and that area over there has already been painted so I just you know I got above these two doors and uh, in between so we'll do that as well and that will clean up too because it does oh i'm going to be painting the you know the wood these little wood headers too so it will make the whole wall look white uh, because when you do look at the wall you know your eye is seeing the wood color and and the unfinished portions you know up above here and everything and it just it just looks unfinished and it looks sloppy so that's the other thing so there's two more steps in the painting the bottom wall and between these doors then the next thing I'm doing now is uh, I'm going to be calling the township today to get my permit or at least get the, the permit portion of all this started and I'll show you where we're going to go with, um, with the sub panel. Alright, you can see this little jog over here and basically my door is right here and the, the stair is right down there um, so we're looking, we're looking head on to it. The sub panel I plan on putting like right above this existing outlet right there. So the sub panel will be somewhere around here. Now, if we look straight down into the floor and we turn on our x-ray vision, this wall goes straight down and extends out a little bit into the, into the shop. On the other side of this wall is my Bilko doors. So picture that the stairs go down this way on an angle into the basement. And when you get down at the bottom of the basement and you, and you turn and look to your immediate right on this back facing wall here which is really this wall is the main electrical panel so the main electrical panel basically lives somewhere like maybe on the other side of this and, and straight down so basically we're gonna we're gonna come up we're gonna turn with the conduit we're gonna uh, break through the wall somewhere around here and just you know just feed it up 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 and the sub panel will go somewhere around here. That's what my plan is for now. And uh, I've actually been talking with Stan and he's helping me uh, kind of create a, a shopping list of things. So it's, I'm, I'm probably gonna get either like a, a square D um, or a GE sub panel, maybe a 10, a, a 10, ooh, did they say 10 space? No, I don't know. I don't need a lot of electricity in here. Um, I need obviously, a general purpose 110 circuit for plugging in grinders and lamps or, or whatever kind of hand tools you're using and then I need a um, I need a circuit for each of my 220 machines which will be the lathe which will be the surface grinder and uh, I'm gonna probably run two more well I'll run two more when I get the machines but you know for future growth I do plan on getting a, a small CNC in here 
um, but it'll be easy enough to just <clears throat> tap into the box and just run a, a separate um, circuit for each one. So that's really all I need. You know, and uh, I'll, I'll need a, another, I'll have another gang box of four for the shaper and the drill press because they're going to be, this, you know, they're gonna be uh, close at hand. So I don't really have all that much crazy uh, electronic, uh, electrical needs up here. You know, we have the, we have the existing light circuits up there, which I'll just tap into, you know, when I run the, the lights all up in here, um, I'll be doing, I'll be just tapping off of that circuit right there. I don't need that to be on a sub panel. I mean, for what, right? It's just more work that I don't need to do. I'm excited. I'm really excited about the wall, especially that back wall. I mean, you know, I could hang my Starrett chart and, you know, I got some nice things that I want to hang up too to make the shop look good. I have the flags from, uh, I, I think it was Bob's flags and banners from the Bash. He gave me a beautiful flag two years ago and I had nowhere to put it up. So that's ac absolutely going to go on this one of these walls here. F uh, flying it very proudly and displayed. All right, other than that, I'll get back to you and show you when we're done painting the dark gray footwall. Well, our painting is done over in this section. And as you can see, uh, not careful planning has resulted in a little bit of bleed through. Um, and when I say not careful planning, I'm really talking about careful taping. So for this one little stretch, this is about an 11 foot stretch. We got sections, sorry, we have sections that have uh, bled through the tape, which is no problem because I'll just, I'll recut in with some gray paint. <clears throat> in fact, I have a whole other gallon. This, this uh, floor kit came with two gallons. I only used one. And you could see there's, there's little uh, drips and stuff like this. You know, what can you say? It's, it's very dark paint and you're on the floor and you know, things happen. So what I'm doing to remedy that is uh, I'm going around to all the existing tape. Over there, I'm sorry, that whole wall too is subject to a couple little spatters and stuff like this. But this wall over here, we're not, we're not gonna let that happen. And how I remedied this is with two things. There's a gap here, okay? And I'm using just this piece of metal and I'm, I laid the tape proud so it will, it'll stick over and then I can push it down. And I'm just using this thing here to create the crease and so I'm not using my finger to press down on it. I'm just using this, this stiff little brush here. And it really gets in there and, and um, creases the, the tape down into the grain of the, of the concrete. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna work our way over here, get this last section painted, and then uh, you know we'll cut in. All right, well, it's a couple of hours later and I finished, got all the paint done. Got the fans drying it out now. Open the windows in here, get some air. So, um, yeah, I, I really prepped it better this time. Um, was able to really just slather it all in there. I mean, I'm talking, you're just pouring it in there. Um, there's sheetrock crumbling underneath, and there's still dirt behind all of this, uh, this horribly installed B BX cable. It's hard to see now because it's black or uh, dark gray, I mean, it was really, it drank up a lot of paint, that's for sure. So what I'm gonna do is, you know, when this is all dry, we're gonna pull the tape off, and you can see there's some spots where, you know, little accidents happen here and there. Um, for instance, right there, all right. So what I'll do is I'll get a brush with some of the white paint and very carefully, you know, make sure it's not dripping and just, you know, give it a little bit of an artistic touch. And there's there's some schmutz over there and a couple of little rub marks. So we'll do that. And then um, I'm gonna mix up, well, first off, I still have this to do now, this wood and uh, above the garage doors with the white. So we're gonna take care of that next. Um, and then 
don't know why I didn't do this spillway over here, this little recess of concrete. I would, I would think most likely because I had one gallon mixed up and I was really basically running out of, uh, running out of paint when I was doing the floor. So anyway, what we'll do is I'm going to mix up that next gallon of paint and we're going to paint all in here. I'm going to hit any of these little, you can see some of these, some of these marks here for when I brought the lathe in. I guess the paint hadn't fully cured. You can see some more over here and there's a big one over here. So there's, you know, there's some marks <clears throat> that the, uh, that this crane made when we were pulling the lathe in. Whatever, you know, it comes with the territory, I guess. But I'll, you know, I'll use a brush and I won't make a, a big mess of it, but just, you know, go in and kind of dab it in there and fix it up as best I can while taking care of these edges right here. It'll be, a, <laughs> it'll be another artistic uh, endeavor on my part. So other than that, you know, then we'll be done. And then, you know, electric box to be mounted there. Or just, I mean, the sub panel. But that's it for this week. You know, it's, it's coming along. It will look good when it's done, though, I will tell you that. Um, it's one of the things, you know, I really wanted this done faster, faster, faster. But, you know, we're experiencing some nice dry weather here in uh, eastern PA. Some nice cool nights. You know, those, those nights where you realize that fall is here. So, with that, the clock is ticking, though, as well. So, I got to get the electric put in. And then I have to put the, I'm thinking about putting the heater right there. It's one of those very thin um, wall, you know, it's like a flush mount, blue flame, chimneyless, natural gas heaters. And some of my neighbors have them, actually two people that way have them and had them for years. And what the benefit of that is, is not only does it make your garage nice and warm, but you know, the heat rises and my bedroom is above the garage. So it's like a sauna. Um, I wouldn't say a sauna, but it's, you know, it's hot in the summer and I got to really black out the windows and uh, keep the doors closed and stuff like that uh, to try to keep it as dark and as cool as possible. And it, it works really good that way. Um, but in the winter time, same exact thing. There's no heat here rising up. So it's like a refrigerator up there. Um, so, you know, if I have the heater here, it will definitely add a little bit of warmth to rise up and keep, you know, take some of the the chill out of the air but here you go there's the stair that really looks nice i like that it's man i never seen my stair look so clean and nice before i'm getting real excited there's going to be some blinds here in the window for those summer months um you know i'll have a window ac probably i'll put it in that window because obviously the closer you get to the you know to the climate controlled house it's cooler over here so we'll have the ac over here in the summertime uh, window unit, but for for you know times like this. I mean you can see what it is right here. Here's my trusty Weather gauge right there 77 degrees 64 percent humidity. It is a little It is a little moist in here again. It's it's not um, it, it isn't unpleasant. I think I'm probably feeling a little sticky right now because I'm just up and down from you know sitting on the floor and moving around and stuff like that and and actually painting and I was under the windows too and the sun is beaming down you could see so I think that's what kind of heated me up a little bit but it's it's very comfortable in here and that's the beauty of all this is you know now I have natural light I have windows it's it's just a way more um, pleasant you know zen like kind of a shop environment you know um, one of the things I was talking I was talking to uh, to Rob Renz uh, Robin Renz about um, his shop. He's got sort of something like this as well. I think his is a little bit bigger, maybe maybe um, along the likes of maybe like a three-car garage. I don't I don't really know for sure. Um, I have plans on going down and visiting him in his shop because uh, I want to take a look and see how he has his shop laid out. You know, to get some ideas because as much as I have this, um, you know, put onto graph paper and everything, I'm I'm finding it. You know, I'm. I'm feeling a little indecisive. I just, I, I want to change it every day I look. I'm thinking of a different layout, so who knows? We'll have to see how it all plans out, or, or pans out, sorry. But yeah, so here's just the last look before we wrap it up. I 
just finished that last little piece. I was about to put the paint away and go clean the brush, and I saw that, and I was like, oh, man. So I'll be happy, though, when, when all that gets all painted, and it'll just, it'll clean up. The whole look of that wall will clean up. You know, you can see it still looks very unfinished. And the tape, you know, tape too, it just makes it all look very unfinished. So I think, um, you know, during the week I'll paint that because it's Saturday now and I got some stuff I actually have to do down in the shop itself. Um, and, you know, Memorial uh, Labor Day weekend, so I'm going to go out and do something. All right, everyone, other than that, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.